Lesson three, the Middle Kingdom. You are there. The year is 1900 BC, and you are proud to be an Egyptian. Egypt is united again under powerful leaders. They have defeated Egypt's enemies and built fortresses along the borders to guarantee that Egypt will never be threatened again. Valuable goods flow into Egypt's cities from other lands. Old irrigation systems have been repaired. And new ones are being built. New temples and pyramids rise from the sands, just as precious crops rise from the Nile's fertile banks. Reuniting the kingdom. At the end of the old kingdom, in about 2181 BC, Egypt fell into civil war, or war between two groups in the same place. At about the same time, a long drought set in. Farmland dried up and crops failed. Famines or food shortages plagued the war-torn country. No longer united by one king, Egyptian nobles fought one another for power. A scribe named Nefertiti described these troubled times: "One can cross the water Nile on foot. The land is in sickness. One will take up weapons or warfare." A son as an enemy, a brother as a foe. Egypt reunited in about 2040 BC. That year marks the beginning of the Middle Kingdom, a time of stability and growth that lasted until about 1786 BC. The rule of Dynasty 12 is considered the high point of this period. The dynasty started. In about 1991 BC, when a vizier named Amunemet from Lower Egypt became a king, he and those who ruled after him conquered all of northern Nubia. They set up a chain of forts to protect the region. Along their northeastern border, the Egyptians built the walls of the prince, a series of forts to protect the Nile Delta. The rulers of Dynasty 12. Undertook massive building projects to help secure water for food crops. They built more irrigation canals to honor the dead. They built temples and pyramids. They also built an elaborate temple now known as Labyrinth, that was said to have had 3,000 rooms connected by a maze of hallways. The Middle Kingdom was also a time of advances in art and literature. Egyptian artists revived the wall painting style of the Old Kingdom and began crafting the finest jewelry ever made in Egypt. Writers of the time produced Egypt's earliest literature. Middle Kingdom literature included not only religious writings but also writings about everyday life. For example, Middle Kingdom writers provided guidelines for living in society. Trade. Trade with other regions increased during the Middle Kingdom. Caravans and ships carried goods between Egypt and parts of southwestern Asia, eastern Africa, and the eastern Mediterranean region. Egypt had plenty of resources of its own to trade, especially grains. It also was rich in valuable minerals and semi-precious stones. However, Egypt lacked some important resources, such as wood for building and copper for metalworking. Caravans brought silver from Syria and copper and turquoise from the Sinai Peninsula. Ships sailing from what is now Lebanon brought cedar and pine wood. Gold, ebony, ivory, and incense came to Egypt through trade with southern Nubia. Whether by land or by sea, trade could be difficult and dangerous. Caravans moved slowly along desert routes, traveling only about ten miles a day. Overland traders often faced robbers and sandstorms on their long journeys. Trade by sea was faster, but pirates were a danger. Sea traders also had to brave strong winds and rough waves during the winter months. Although difficult and risky, trade brought much wealth to those who could overcome its dangers. Even in ancient times, a trader needed to do a cost-benefit analysis to decide whether to carry out trade. In this kind of study, a person tries to determine 
whether the economic benefit of doing something makes it worth the risk. A Time of Invasion After Dynasty 12, Egypt faced attacks from invaders. At first, Egypt remained united, but the government was weak. As many as 70 kings ruled during Dynasty 13. Also at this time, large groups of people from southwestern Asia crossed into Egypt by way of the Sinai Peninsula. Over time, these people settled in the area around the northeastern Nile Delta. The Egyptians called the people the Hyksos, meaning rulers of foreign lands. The Hyksos brought about the end of the Middle Kingdom and tore Egypt apart. The Hyksos had superior military technology. They fought from horse-drawn chariots, wore body armor, and used a stronger kind of bow. Without armor, the Egyptian foot soldiers were no match for the Hyksos. In about 1640 BC, the Hyksos conquered Lower Egypt. Hyksos kings ruled Lower Egypt for about 100 years and established Dynasty 15. Egyptian rulers remained in power only in Upper Egypt. The time of the Hyksos brought important cultural changes in Egypt. Besides superior weapons, the Hyksos introduced horses, upright looms, and new musical instruments, the lyre and the lute. In turn, the Hyksos learned hieroglyphs and began to worship Egyptian gods. Under the Hyksos, Egypt changed in other important ways. The Hyksos greatly expanded trade routes as far as Crete, now a Greek island. In the mid-1500s BC, Egyptian rulers in the south declared war on the Hyksos kings. The Egyptians regained power and drove the Hyksos into southwestern Asia. <laughs>